I still remember when the thought of having the energy and motivation to do just about anything productive after my day job seemed like a fantasy. The fact that I've been able to grow my YouTube channel while working a full-time job and still making time for friends, family, and taking care of my health is something that my younger self would have thought was impossible. After watching this video, you'll have a post-work protocol you can follow to help you get in a solid session of deep focus every evening, even after your full-time job, so you can go to sleep feeling fulfilled and proud of the progress you've made that day. Mornings versus evenings. I want to start by touching on an important topic. So is it better to get your productive work done on your side project, business, passion, etc., in the mornings before work or in the evenings after work? And as you could probably guess, I think this depends on many different factors, including just your personal preference, your sleep habits, your chronotype, your goals in life, and most importantly, the nature of your day job. If you have a standard nine to five job and don't have an insanely long commute, I think it's pretty reasonable for you to try waking up earlier before your day job and take advantage of that consistent early morning time to get some deep productive work done first thing in the morning. But maybe your typical work shift starts way earlier or you have a really long commute. So waking up even earlier to get some work done before your work maybe seems like like something that you couldn't realistically do. And so the only time you can really work on your side project or business during the week is in the evenings after work. Regardless of whether the evenings after your day job are actually your only opportunity to do anything else outside of your work, there will inevitably be some times where you'll want to get some productive work done in the evenings or at the very least have the energy and motivation to get something meaningful done after work like spending present high quality time with friends and family or practicing a new hobby. The problem with relaxing. If you're anything like me, you probably finish up your day job feeling pretty tired and mentally drained. And at this point, our brains usually tell us that we need to relax or we deserve to take a break. And I definitely do think that it's beneficial to take some time to transition away from our normal day job before getting started with the rest of our evening. But the problem is what we typically consider relaxing activities don't actually help us recover our mental energy and can often drain it further. And you know exactly which activities I'm talking about, laying around on the couch, checking your phone, scrolling through social media, watching Netflix, or even watching YouTube videos like this one. My after work routine used to consist of an hour long session of YouTube rabbit holes where I'd watch productivity videos with the mindset that, well, I was taking a break, but since they were productivity videos, I was still kind of being productive, so it was okay. But even after taking that break and watching those videos, I still felt tired and didn't feel any more ready to get the work done than I did before I took the break. It took a couple more hours for me to finally feel ready to start focusing again. And by that time, it was already close to my bedtime, but because I hadn't really gotten anything done all evening, I felt like I needed to take advantage of this new current sort of productive state and would end up staying up way too late, my sleep would suffer and the cycle would repeat. So what exactly should I have done for those first 30 minutes to one hour after my day job? Well, the first thing to consider is do you even need a break? It is indeed possible that you might not actually feel that tired after work. These type of days probably don't happen that often depending on what you do for your job, but occasionally I would finish up my job and I wouldn't feel that bad honestly and felt like I could continue focusing if I wanted to. I find that this usually happens when the work that I did during that day was more enjoyable or energizing than usual. If that's the case, that's great. Take advantage of it. Keep up that energy and dive straight into whatever else you want to get done that evening. Don't feel like you need to slow down and take a break before you get back to focusing again. However, there's no doubt that most of the time I finish up my day job feeling pretty drained. And when that's the case, I found it's best to do what I like to call a focus recovery ritual. By the way, if you're looking to grow a side business outside of your day job, I think the biggest thing holding you back is personal lifestyle issues that are being reflected in the success of your business. Fixing your time management, daily routine, productivity, relationships, health, habits, removing distractions, etc., is going to be way more impactful on your success than obsessing over finding the perfect business tactics. Fill out the form in the description to apply for a free 30 minute strategy call with me, where I'll basically help you identify and start to solve these issues so you can finally start progressing towards your goals. Focus recovery ritual. Basically, this is a transition period immediately after work where you do between 30 minutes to one hour of a recovery activity. So I do agree that if you're feeling drained after work, you deserve a break. But what does that actually mean? We've already established that the standard breaks that most people take after work don't actually help us feel more recovered. I found that the key is that your break activity is a completely different format from your normal day job work and then also the main task that you'd want to get done after work. So for example, my day job involves a lot of intense focus work looking at a computer screen and my YouTube work also involves looking at a computer screen or at least focusing intensely on one thing. So I wouldn't want to spend this reset period doing anything that also involves intense focus or looking at a screen like staring at my 
my phone, computer, or watching TV, or even reading a book. I find that doing something that allows my brain to kind of turn off and wander freely for a few minutes makes it so that when I do go back to doing more focused work on a computer, I'm way more productive. For me, I find that some form of exercise works really well here, whether it's a full workout or just a quick walk around the block. My day job and YouTube work both involve sitting and focusing on one thing, so exercise is kind of like the complete opposite of this. I enjoy weightlifting, walking, or lately I've been trying these sort of higher intensity CrossFit workouts, but any of them will get the job done as long as it gets your blood flowing and allows your mind to wander freely. And once I finish exercising, my body might be physically tired, but during that time, I feel like my brain was sort of like plugged into a charger and got a bit of a mental energy boost. So my go-to focus recovery ritual is definitely some form of exercise, but maybe you do your workouts at different times of the day or something. So you might want to do something else. And there's definitely some other activities that I've found have also worked really well. The first one is to spend quality time with friends and family. And this can really depend on how you spend that time with them. We still want to apply the same concept of doing something that's a different format from our day job. So in my case, I usually don't spend too much time talking to people as a part of my work. I'll have some meetings throughout the day, but usually it's nothing too intense. So on days when I haven't really been talking to people much, I find that chatting with friends or family is really refreshing and allows my brain a chance to kind of reset. Another activity that really helps me recover my focus is just cooking dinner. Sometimes after work, I'll just go straight to cooking dinner because it's something that I've really come to enjoy doing. And again, it's very different from my typical work activities. Cooking gets me up on my feet, moving around the kitchen. And although I have to focus to a certain extent and make sure to not like burn down the whole kitchen, it feels like a different kind of focus. It's more abstract, less analytical, and almost feels like a form of art to me. So how much can you expect to get done after work? Again, this really depends on your sleep schedule and whether you do most of your focused work in the early mornings or in the evenings, but I find that after doing one of these recovery rituals, I can usually get in one solid deep work session anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes before winding down and getting ready for bed. It's easy to feel like there still isn't enough time to get anything meaningful done after your day job if you don't have a full two or three hours, but remember, it's not about the quantity of time that you have, but the quality of how you spend that time. If you tune out all distractions and get just 45 minutes of deep focus work done on your side hustle or whatever goal you're pursuing outside of your day job and you do that every single weekday, that's a solid four hours of deep focus work per week. And I know that Tim Ferriss would argue that four hours per week is enough to make serious progress. And that's if you only had a little bit of free time in the evenings after work. In reality, you may have more time than that and can fit in another focus session in the early mornings, which is my personal favorite time to work on my side business, not to mention the amount of time that you can have on the weekends if you use them effectively. Click that subscribe button to see more videos like this one. And you can also DM me on Instagram. As always, do something today that your future self would thank you for.